Guys, I am standing in front of a historical building here in the center square of Georgetown, Texas. And every single Saturday out here, there is some political speech happening in the town square. Usually it's two tables here with competing messages. These fellas right here have a sign that says well I'll just let you read it. Respect, protect, and save our Confederate monuments. At issue is this monument directly behind them. And this was at a period in American history that began around 2017 where monuments of Confederate generals, soldiers, politicians were being taken down and torn down throughout the southern states. And there was a movement to take this one down. Now, nobody ever defaced this or tore it down, but there's been political processing to try and get the city to remove it. Usually, there's a Black Lives Matter table that sets up right beside these fellas. I don't see it here today. Maybe we got here late and they've already left. But since we were in the area and we had the camera, I thought we'd just cover what these fellas are doing, maybe go and talk to them and see from their perspective what the situation's all about. So I've come just a little closer. I've closed about half the distance from where we started. And there is the monument in question. I'll just pan down slowly. I guess this is technically tilting down slowly. We've got somebody in sort of Confederate regalia here, manning the table. Here's the inscription of the monument in question. So I'm going to pull back. We can have a look at what they've got on display here. And then I'll just pull back for a wide shot so you can get some context. And before I go and talk to these gentlemen, let's just push into this building here. You can see from this placard that it is a building on the Texas Historic Register. Pardon the sirens, there's some fire trucks going by, unrelated to any activity happening here, incidentally. Let's get a little more light in there. I can't read this from here, but if you want to take a minute and pause, you can have a read. A little bit to the right of that one, there's another plaque on the building.
and then below that a couple of smaller ones so let me just press in here nice and tight again I'm, I'm about a hundred feet away and the writing is pretty small so this is a building of some historical context looks like the front door is boarded up I've never been inside this building um, but before we go and approach these fellas and initiate a conversation, I'm just going to go across the street and see if we can get a wider shot of the building for context. So I wasn't really planning on doing any street photography out here, but right when I got set up across the street, this fella coming out parked his van right in my shot. So I had to wait anyway. Had to wait anyway for him to clear out of here, so I thought we would just get the context in the street as it unfolds. He's put on a seatbelt, and we'll frame the shot. And that's the building. That's where it's happening right there. You can see there tents set up or canopies. This is in the middle of the town square. There's the monument. And here's the historic uh, building probably, yeah. in front of which that Confederate monument stands. It's got this beautiful dome on top. And on top of that, another statue. So I'm just going to hold there for a moment. There's a clock on top, and it has a clock a bell tower, I believe, or, or bells. I don't know if I'd call it a tower. Some very traditional southern architecture borrowed from Rome and Greece. And this is my widest shot right here. Let's start recording. So, I don't even know what you mean by press credentials. Who issues those? Is that like getting a driver's license? No, if you have something from a, a media source, or if you're an independent? I am independent. Okay. Yeah. What sparked your interest in this? Well, I'm interested in documenting the First Amendment freedom to express oneself in public, as you're doing, and anything that either successfully or attempts to inhibit that. Here's our situation. We're involved in litigation. Okay. I'm not talking about anything right now. All right. You're not supposed to be talking to anybody about anything? The, uh, well, what do you call all this? This is you're talking to people, right? Yes, but not about the uh, case. Oh, well, I'm not interested in the case or the legal case. I'm just interested in what you're doing here. What What's your message? What are you trying to share with the public? Uh, Sorry. You're out here with a table full of literature, and you're obviously you've got a message to share with the public. I've got an audience, share your message, broadcast your message. Just imagine that the town square, instead of just the people we're walking by, we're walking by on a really big street, listening to what you have to say. You don't have anything you want to tell the public? I'm offering you a platform here. I understand, sir. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. These boys uh, have a message to share, and they don't want to talk about it. like some Confederate 
weapons here. Well, I guess it's unanimous. Nobody wants to tell the world why you're sitting here with all this cool stuff. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Good. I was just curious what the what the lady was trying to get me to sign down there. Well, it's basically. And I didn't. I didn't know what I was. What she was talking about, but now I do. Yeah. That's, that's I want to educate I'm, myself before I put anything, write, write anything down. Well, that's, that's better than me. Excuse us, we don't be rude. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Cool. I'm not going to frame the story as anything, but I saw you guys here. You have a message you're trying to promote to the public, and I'm just giving you a platform. I'm not going to edit it or add any commentary. It's just this conversation, just like you would talk to any member of the public, like this gentleman passing by, who says, hey, what's going on? What are you guys up to? You tell the public, uh, we're not going to talk about it. We're not interested in having a conversation. Well, to be fair, when people have reported us, they have said exactly what you've said and then slandered us. Really? So we don't want to take that chance again. Oh, OK. Well, that's fair enough. Nothing personal. If you didn't have that camera, we would tell you our story, but... I mean, I'll show you my press credentials if you want to see them. No offense, but we're not talking to any press, right? I'm First <laughs> Amendment certified if you want to see my certification. Uh, I have no need reason to doubt you, sir. I really don't. All right. Nothing personal. We just... We've been lied to before. Yeah, it's nothing personal for me either. Just looked like something interesting to talk about. You guys are set up in a way that it, it leads me to believe you want to talk about a message and promote it, but I'm apparently mistaken. We're doing just fine talking to the, to the average walker by. That's all I am. I'm the average walker by. I just happen to have a camera. All right. Well, usually the BLM folks are out here by you, too. It looks like they're not here today. That's them right there? Everybody's pointing over here. Well, I guess we'll head over there and see uh, see if these folks want to talk about what's going on. The Rangers have a lot of complaints about this gun because it's too light, it's about too fragile, it's about the barrel is too small, the caliber is too small. So when I go to Mexico, one of the captains, Captain Samuel Walker, went up to Colt and told him all the complaints was even the range of fat and wanted a better gun. The two of them worked together and made this video. That's the 1847 Walker Colt. That was the first six shooter of the second revolver. It was the most powerful handgun from 1847 until 1935. It's the official handgun of the state of Hi Texas. Hi again. I do, ma'am. Hi again. I gave my other flyer to take my other flyer. Wait a minute. Oh, shit. Yeah, mine was a bridge. That's it? Oh, that's it. 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 Yeah, case. Picture? Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. No worries. I'll be in the newspaper. <laughs> I don't mind. You're going to be on YouTube. Okay. Well, I wanted to talk to these guys about what their message is and why they're here, but they refuse to speak with me. And if you guys answer, ask them a question, they'll refuse to answer you while I'm standing here with this recording. Okay. Because they think I'm going to slander them or distort their message. Well, folks, that probably just about does it from this booth here. These these boys have something they're trying to say. They won't talk to us, so let's go down the street and talk to the other folks, see what they have to talk about. So in just a moment, we'll head down this way and have a chat with this booth. 
which I believe is the ideological opposition to the boys I just spoke with. But the fellows I just talked to, they are displaying a sign here that says, what we believe in. We believe in the Constitution, military strength, and capitalism. States' rights, historical truths, family values, that our rights come from God. It says, we fought for these beliefs in 1776 and in 1861. We stand for these beliefs today. So, you know, I mean, I can't fault them. Honestly, I'm just going to do a little bit of a whip pan here to show you where I'm standing in relation to their booth. Um, obviously, I share some of those beliefs, at least in the Constitution. Um, we're here because we believe in the First Amendment and in the Second Amendment. I mean, I believe in all of the Constitution. I mean, belief is a funny word, but of course I believe in it. I believe it exists, but... I also honor those principles. So while we are emphasizing the First Amendment, and these boys also emphasize the First Amendment because they're out here in the public square promoting their message, they also believe in the Fifth Amendment, which is <laughs> the right to remain silent. I mean, usually that right is uh, to protect oneself from self-incrimination against the state. But, you know, the fact is we live in a free society. So within reason, within the limits of the First Amendment, you can say anything you want in this country. You can express yourself freely. But just as you have the freedom to express your message, you have the freedom to not express your message and to be quiet. You don't have to talk to anybody if you don't want to. So I offered them a platform. I offered you guys to them as an audience to expand and promote their message. And they declined. So I've taken about 20 steps down the block here. And uh, now I can read this sign a little more clearly. It says P-O-W-M-I-A. Confederates are not U.S. veterans. Honor true veterans. Hashtag move it now. I assume that it is the statue. So the Confederate boys are just behind me. These folks are just in front of me. This is the central square of Georgetown, Texas. This has to be a, a town hall or a courthouse or something of that nature, or at least once was. There's the monument in question with the Confederate boys underneath it saying that they want to keep that statue intact. And these folks over here are saying that they want that statue moved. And uh, they want to move now. Let's see if they want to chat. I am with myself. I am independent media. Okay. Do you have a card? I sure do. May we have it, please? Yeah, sure. Texas Independent Press, at your service. And which way do you lean? I lean objectively. I'm just trying to find out why you're here. It's not, the story's not about me. Well, whether we're pro-statue or anti-statue, I'm not really one way or the other. I'm independent press. I'm pro-truth. I'm for the objective situation as it 
unfolds. Do I have a card? Yeah. What are interested in So I just went over there and talked to those boys under the statue. They refused to say anything to me. I said, hey, I've got an audience. Uh, you've got a message, obviously. Tell the world your message and I'll broadcast it. And they said, we're not saying a word. So apparently you guys are in the same camp. You all have more in common than you realize. We'll talk to you. What? We'll talk we're to not, you. We, we've had an awful lot of hostility and meanness today, so we're a little bit worried about anybody who seems to have any agenda. Well, that's why the this is the witness that never lies, you guys. It's oh. totally objective. Now you know that's partly true. <laughs> it can't make you look good or bad. It can only record what you say. Well, but then you, you know, you post the parts that work for your story. Sure. I mean, you personally. I don't yeah, know people do that. But like I said, you are repeating the exact message those boys just gave me. They said, we don't know who you are. We don't know what you're about. People lie to us all the time. They say they're going to do one kind of story. They do another. So like I said, you, you folks have more in common at these two tables than you realize. So far, from my point of view, you are identically interchangeable. Oh, no, sir. From my point of view, that's true. I'm, I'm over here. What do you, would you like to know? What? What would you like to know? How can we help you? What are you guys doing here? We are trying to get the monument. The monument, and that's the monument right there? The monument, yes. Great. What's that monument about? What's the deal with it? Uh, it honors the Confederacy and the Klan. It's uh -huh. a racist monument. Okay. It conceals our history. Oh, okay. So, uh... In a lot of places, I've noticed, like starting in around 2017, citizens just took matters into their own hands and pulled monuments down. And I've noticed, like for the last couple of years, you folks are out here um, trying to go through the legal channels to get it removed. So I'm definitely in your camp in that department. I didn't really like it when people just took matters into their own hands. So I appreciate that you're using the town square and your freedom of speech to promote your message and go through the normal channels. Anything to say about that? Um, I think that the process of removal should be an educational process. So if you take it down yourself, you're kind of... You, you know, when, when you were in like an elementary school and you were put in a group project, Yeah. and one kid would do the project? Right, and everyone would sign their name to it? Yeah. Um, I think when people do the do-it-yourself version of monument removal, yeah. they're like the one kid in the group who's done the work for everybody. Right. Um, what we're trying to do is to see to it that a lot of people know why the monument should be gone. If it just disappeared, I mean, that would be good, but it's not as good as people knowing why it should be gone. Tell the world why it should be removed. Because it is a clan monument that conceals our history. What history is it concealing? Um, so think about it like this. Um, so imagine that some weird Bill Clinton fetishists became the town council somewhere and they erected a monument in honor of Bill Clinton's superlative marital fidelity. Okay. That wouldn't be history. Right. Right. That would conceal history. If okay. you're honoring someone for something dishonorable, yes. then you're concealing what they actually did. I see. The Confederate soldier fought for slavery. That was the sole stated cause for the existence of the Confederacy, according to every seceding state, according to every seceding leader, according to songs written by ordinary Southern soldiers, according to letters home, according to newspapers written by ordinary Southern soldiers, according to every speech, article, everything. Yes. So that guy was fighting for slavery. Now, an individual Confederate soldier might well have been drafted. Mm -hmm. And in which case he acquiesced in evil, which isn't evil, but it isn't honorable either. But they were fighting for slavery, and it's important that we know that that's what the Confederacy was there for. If you're honoring someone for something that we officially reject around here, you're concealing their actual nature. Like, in 2022, no county in the United States would put up a monument to George Wallace on the schoolhouse steps or something. Right. Right? But that is a monument to racists in a context in which you wouldn't expect a monument to racists from which the, the ordinary person is going to deduce, well, the Civil War can't have been about slavery because, look, these guys were honorable, therefore they can't have been fighting for slavery. Where do you guys come down on the question of history in a time capsule? In other words, values shift in regions over time. I mean, so this is preserving some part of the local history I mean, that was a true part of history at the time. I mean, in 1916, it is true that the area was dominated by clan-like people, mm -hmm. and they put up a clan monument. 
So that monument went up in 1916? 1916. Is that when this building was built? No, the building's a little bit older. Okay. Um, the thing is that, uh, you know, if it were in a museum and we could put up a sign saying this was a clan monument, stuff right. like that, that would be one thing. And yeah, I mean, I understand, to whatever degree this is a museum, Yes. If we could have interpretive contextual plaque next to it, right. like that, that would be one thing. That plan, by the way, was offered and rejected by the Confederates who kind of run. Why do they have any say over, like, you're not, you're not appealing to them to take the statue down, right? Everybody's appealing to who, the city or the county? Yeah, the city council. The city sorry, council. Um, county commissioners. Court, the sorry. county commissioner, okay. Have you guys presented that idea to the county commissioner of having <laughs> an explanatory <laughs> plaque? Over and over. Lots yes. of laughter. And so the county commissioner is not friendly to that idea? No, uh, that's correct. Oh, interesting. Well, I thank you for speaking with me because I'm, I'm pretty ignorant and pretty neutral. Okay, tell people in this audience if they want to find more information about your message, where they can find it. Um, Wilco Patriots Group on Facebook. Yeah, you can go to, to Facebook, Wilco Patriots Group. Um, you can look up the Texas Reconstruction Project, Deconfederate Austin. Um, I got a bunch of video. Well, I thank you for that explanation. I'm getting the little red indicator that my battery is about to die. Okay. So I'm just going to take a little pause. Very understandable. Here. Well, anything else that you guys want to say before I move back over to the Confederate boys? Anything I want to say? You might have to come closer so I can hear you, sir. Uh, so I don't know what's already been said. And I don't want to rehash anything that's already been. Well, discussed, even if you rehash it, it'll be in your words. It'll be your message. I don't think Brian addressed the issue of veterans. Okay, well, as a veteran, as a West Point graduate, yes. I have a particular issue with any monument that stands towards for the enemies of the United States of America. The Confederacy was a very successful enemy to the United States of America. They killed more Americans than any enemy had up until World War II, as a matter of fact. So they were very successful and very proud of that history, as a matter of fact. The thing that we commonly refer to as the Confederate flag isn't even really the Confederate flag. It's not a flag. It's the battle flag, right? It's a battle flag, exactly. It is no different than the flag that Al-Qaeda flew when they were fighting against my soldiers, when they were fighting against me. As a matter of fact, Al-Qaeda was a much less successful enemy to the United States mm -hmm. than the Confederate flag. So, if anything, we should be much more concerned with an internal enemy that has chosen, chosen by their own words, not my words, right, to stipulate that I am not a human being, that their foundation lays in their cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition, per their vice president in 1861, in 1862, and again in 1863. He said the same thing three times, I think a minute. <laughs> so, if we do believe what they said, oh, yeah. so and they were so successful in it, we, we should probably be less than inclined to want to propagate that message, particularly that close to our housing government. For you to say that you align yourself with an organization that stood for my degradation and continued servitude, and then equally say you're not a racist, is like me saying that, you know what, I love you, but I hate you. Pick one, and live your life. Let me a truth. I don't have a problem with that. There's plenty of racists who have my guts. Plenty who aren't racist in my guts. That's fine. But be who you are. The duplicitous nature of the thing is what really is. Let's see if these fellas want to counterpoint anything that we just heard. Thank you so much. Hey, boys. I just went and talked to those folks down the way there, and they gave me and my audience their entire philosophy, point of view, and what they're doing here. So. I, well, I thought maybe you'd want an opportunity to counter what they said so that my audience gets the whole picture. No comment. All right. Well, this is the witness that never lies. It's just objectively recording whatever happens here. So you are already giving a message. This is just the message you're giving when you have a platform to give any message you want. I don't have an agenda here. I don't have a dog in the hunt. Going nothing once. Personal. Really nothing personal. Oh, I understand. I don't, I'm not taking it personally at all. Uh, people say the same thing and have slandered us. We don't want to take a chance. Well, I can slander you anyway just based on this if I want to. So might as well just tell the world what you want to say instead of giving me the microphone. All right, folks. There you have it. Guys, how you doing?
the Williamson County Grays 502. This gentleman's in the shop, but I'll get you the banner. I've never talked to any of these folks before at either table. I've just circled around and seen them active before. So I thought, now that I have the channel up and running, we're our free speech promoting channel. We stand by the First Amendment. So I have just a basic fundamental appreciation for the fact that for the last at least year and maybe longer, there's a public process going on here in the town square, right in the middle of town. These boys put a table out, they put literature out, they stop and talk to people. Down the way, a countervailing point gets discussed, and I am wildly in favor of this old school town square discussion and dialogue that's going on. It's not just colonies online on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube uh, filling in the comments section, but this is a legitimate town square discussion. So in that respect, I'm wildly in favor of it. But these fellas just refuse to engage in any kind of dialogue with me. And that's their right. They believe in the Constitution. The Constitution includes the Fifth Amendment. So you've heard it from the horse's mouth here at the Williamson County Grays, number 502, the Sons of Confederate Veterans in Georgetown, Texas. Here's a camera, here's a platform. What's your message? No comment. Guys, as soon as I signed off in front of their sign over there, and said that they wanted no comment. I stopped recording, I packed up my tripod, I threw it on my shoulder. As soon as I took one step away, the fellow there in the plaid shirt says, hey, stop a second, let me tell you something. I said, no, you had your chance, man. I gave you a platform, I gave you the camera. You didn't want to say anything. It's like, well, no, just let me tell you something, I'm gonna do you a favor. And I said, I don't need any favors from you. And he started pointing and said, go look at today's paper. I said, look, I don't need to look at today's paper. I wanted to talk to you as a representative of your message. You refused to say anything. That, that's on you. You're not doing me any favors. You had your chance to speak. You refused. So I don't know what is motivating these guys. They think that I can't slander them if they don't say anything, but they're just opening the door to slander if they refuse to promote their own message. So I don't know anything about these guys. You heard what they had to say at the opposing table. I didn't have an agenda. I came out here as an objective journalist in favor of their free speech rights, in favor of the way they go about promoting their message by having face-to-face -face conversations and dialogue in the town square with the public. I think that's a beautiful tradition. I would like to see more of that all across our country. Active town squares. People promoting their message, people persuading others through rhetoric, dialogue, and communication. But there's some kind of a paranoia there that prevents them from wanting to share their message with me. So I think we've gotten everything there is to get from this little story, and I know that it's uh, a little bit of a shift from the kind of material we cover here normally, but I am not, by self-identification, a First Amendment auditor in the sense that that's what we do here, that's the nature of the channel. This is independent press, so there's all kinds of different stories we can cover, all kinds of different angles and dimensions to what's going on in our society. 
And I'd like to do more stories like this as they present themselves, more interviews, and create a broader picture of the tapestry of what's going on in our society today. So from the very public town square here in the center of Georgetown, Texas, This is the Texas Independent Press signing off.